All right, so now we're gonna look at what happens if we wanna use use substitution, but we don't have a perfect du when we go to sub back in. It's totally fine. We can manipulate the integrand to use u substitution if and only if du is off by a constant. So if we're missing like a 5 or something like that, not 5x. So it can't be off by x's. We can't need an x cubed, but we can need a 3 and that's okay. So if we look at this first example... We're going to first pick our u, and it's not quite obvious because we don't have x and whatever's nearby raised to a power that is blatant to us, but we want to remember that as long as it's in the denominator, it's really raised to a negative 1 power. So remember, our goal is this is going to look something like how 1 over x did. It doesn't tell you the power that it's raised to, but you know that if it's in the denominator, it's really to a negative 1 power when the power is not written. And that integrates, when you add 1, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So that's the one that integrates to be ln of x plus c. So that's what this one looks like. We want to make it as simple as x to the negative 1, but with u's instead. So u is going to be the denominator. Very typical for a quotient rule. Then du dx is a regular derivative of u with respect to x. So what's the derivative of x squared plus 1? It is just 2x. The only difference between this and our derivatives at the beginning is we need to multiply by dx. And now we are ready for some substitution. So we want to write this whole integrand in terms of u's. So first of all, we know u is in the denominator. So it's raised to some negative power. And since it's not written, it's u to the negative 1. And then we want to look at what we have left over. So what we have left over is an x and a dx. So what we need, though, is not just an x and a dx. That's great. But we're missing a 2. So one way of saying that is we have half of what we need on the inside here. So we need it to be 2x dx, but we only have x dx, so we have half of our perfect du. So we could put a half on the outside and a du on the inside, if that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, I'm going to show you another way. So instead of saying x dx is half of our du, we can just put that 2 there. If you're a visual person and you want to see it there, let's put that 2 there. We have 2x dx that allows us to write our du, but it feels kind of illegal because it is. We just doubled the value of the integrand just because it allowed us to write du. So we're going to balance out putting a 2 on the inside with putting opposite of 2 outside. 1 half of 2. So as long as there's a 1 half outside, it'll balance with that 2 inside, right? Half of 2 just multiplies to be 1, and we didn't change the value of the integrand at all. So if we need a 2 on the inside, we can put it in there, but we need a half outside to balance it. And then we get to write our du. So there's two ways of thinking about it. Having x dx, and we need a 2x dx, means we have half of our du. So we put a half on the outside and a du inside. Or if you want to physically put the 2 on the inside so that you can see a 2x dx, exactly what we need, you can just put its reciprocal outside. Half of 2 is just 1. So you did a fancy way of multiplying by 1. You didn't change the value of the integrand. And now we're ready to integrate. We're going to keep that constant multiple 1 half. The antiderivative of u to the negative 1, add 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So remember, you can't divide by 0. It's an ln of u plus k, which we kind of suspected when we wrote our goal. And our last step is to just write it back as x's with a plus c at the end. So in terms of x's, we have 1 half ln of x squared plus 1, plus c. And we're going to do plenty more of these, so we'll get the hang of figuring out the constant that we're missing. But you can always manipulate to get your perfect du as long as you are just off by a constant, not any x terms.